Welcome everyone to the 2023 Global Animal Disaster Management Conference, brought to you in partnership with Animal Evac New Zealand and our platinum sponsor, Four Paws International. It is our privilege to welcome Dr. Steve Glassy. He is a patron of Animal Evac New Zealand, which embodies his passion for helping animals in disasters. He has served as the chair of the organizing committee for both GADMAT conferences and is presenting today on the thought-provoking question, can artificial intelligence prevent lessons lost? Dr. Glassy. Thank you, Jenny. It's great to be here back at, at GADMAC. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about artificial intelligence and lessons management. Uh, lessons management is certainly one of my areas of interest in terms of research and practice and how we can integrate uh, artificial intelligence potentially in lessons management, but also in the context of animal disaster management. So really it's about building on what uh, Dave Pauley uh, was talking about, which is embracing technology um, and uh, not being young as I used to be. It's about sort of trying to be ahead of the technology and or at least embracing it. So um, hopefully this will be a thought provoking um, discussion. Today, uh, the session we're going to be covering is just a bit of background in terms of the context. Um, I'll briefly talk about the Edgecom flood that occurred in New Zealand, uh, and then we can look at, well, are we really learning the lessons? We, we do sometimes, we'll do after action reports, but actually are we actually learning? Uh, there's no point just responding and responding and responding if we're not going to reduce the, the, the size of the lessons learning si uh, circle. We'll look at some solutions, uh, and these are some of these solutions are really in sort of um, beta format. Um, so do we need to have a bit more sort of uh, application and experience and some opportunities for collaboration. So just to give us some context, um, the uh, today's sort of session will touch on uh, two incidents. Um, and it's not a um, it's not a uh, an autopsy of, of of these incidents. It's really just saying, um, for the uh, uh, peer-reviewed study that was published with my colleagues, Marcelo Rodriguez Ferreira and uh, Dr. Mike King, um, we, did a, we did some analysis regarding after-action reports from two events in New Zealand and basically tried to figure out, have we actually learned between these two events? Uh, so the town of Edgecombe, um, the first event which is, provides the baseline uh, for the research was... Um, in 2017, and at half past eight in the morning, um, the, uh, the the stock bank or levy uh, failed, um, inundating the township of about 600 households um, rapidly uh, with minimal notice. As a result, the um, the township was uh, was uh, evacuated. Um, uh, there was no loss of human life, um, but over 1,000 animals were left behind, making it leading up to the largest companion animal disaster rescue in New Zealand history. Um, at that particular time, um, there was no real, uh, the, the, the National Fire Service didn't have a, a direct mandate to carry out animal rescues. So it was, uh, it was left at the time to a number of animal welfare organisations to uh, undertake that rescue. And um, about 25 volunteers uh, worked on the ground tires tirelessly um, for six days to, to re recover and rescue those animals. Um, but then it went on to a, uh, there was a fire um, and about sort of a couple of years later. Um, and again, although there are different uh, types of disaster, um, the research that was published in iGen looked at, well, what, what generic things, what lessons that applied in the first event would be applicable in the subsequent event? And if so, did we actually learn it? Um, now that paper is available uh, from, from iGEM um, and a analysis was, was done between the two after action reports. The, the disappointing, but not, probably not surprising uh, point was that only 7% of the lessons identified that were relevant from the first emergency to the subsequent emergency were actually applied. 
So that's a reasonably sort of disappointing uh, result in terms of are we actually learning the lessons? And I'd beg the question, no, we're not actually learning lessons. We may be identifying, but we're not actually learning. So often I try to discourage the term lessons learnt because they seldom are actually learnt in, a, in an institutional and in a sustainable way. But is this, this finding of 7%, is this unique just to New Zealand? Is it just unique just to animal responses? Um, and I would say probably not. Uh, this could be indicative of um, non-animal emergencies uh, and internationally, but further research needs to, needs to occur to substantiate that sort of assumption. Uh, but the key issues that came out um, that uh, weren't learnt were around training, capability, law policy, planning, information management and incident management, like how things are organised and deployed, etc. So it wasn't until chat PGT came around really this year into my universe that I started to think, how can we actually use this technology rather than trying to resist it? Um, it's a happening thing. It's here to sort of stay. Um, the horse is already bolted. How do we actually use it for good? And that sort of got me thinking, saying, well, one thing that AI is extremely good on is establishing or identifying patterns. So in terms of um, qualitative um, analysis, it's actually a pretty impressive tool. So what we did is we, I started to look at different tools. And one of, them, one of those tools for AI was Dante AI. Now, there's different plans, but there is a free plan. Um, but essentially, Dante AI uh, differs from um, the traditional chat PGT that most of us are used to in the sense that you create a knowledge base. So you add websites, documents, et cetera, even videos um, into a knowledge base, which is essentially a specific folder. And then the AI trains on those documents and you provided a query and it answers uh, your query based on the folder of documents that you have given it. So it means it provides a bit of a ring fence around what information it actually pulls from, uh, which takes away some of the sort of some of the crazy results we do get uh, from chat PGT when we ask it questions and it brings up issues and points and references that don't even exist sometimes. So step one, create a, create a knowledge base. And when we looked at um, you know, the lessons lost uh, or identified um, over the last few years, I thought, well, let's let's go to the to to the government resources. So the Ministry of Primary Industry in New Zealand, which oversees um, animal uh, emergency management currently, um, has produced a number of after action reports. Now we have to sort of you know uh, acknowledge that government reports are not necessarily evidence based. Um, they are, there are political motivators to it, so there is a political bias to it. However, um, they are generally treated as a at least semi-trusted um, document. Um, and so we've used those documents. We've pulled the after action reports, as you can sort of see on the screen here. We've uploaded those to um, Dante AI. So Dante AI is not actually drawing on any other information to do its analysis at this stage. So we then ask Dante AI, without any sort of bias or leading questions, we just say, give me a summary of this knowledge base. And you can see what it talks about. It talks about, it's uh, you know, looking at previous events, it's looking at what went well, what could have been improved. And it gives a nice sort of quite concise paragraph or so summary of what could, you know, what these documents actually are within the collection or within that knowledge base. Um, so again, it's not going to, the documents that we put in uh, are government reports, they're not subject to any academic or blind uh, peer review, and they obviously generally downplay any negative criticism of, of government. But there are some good uh, information within these reports that we certainly um, want to um, examine. So beyond that general summary, the next sort of uh, phase is to say, right, go into detail and tell us what went well and what could be done better. 
and give us some recommendations. So again, AI does have some bias, but it doesn't have the personal bias that, for example, I may have as, as a researcher that's emotionally invested in um, you know, this particular topic. So it came up straight away saying, look, you know, the agency response, the utilization and training, the early requests for assistance, they were good things. Oh, fantastic. All right. What could have been done better? What's the recommendations? What could have been done, done better? Role clarity. Information management, having a, a, an appropriate database, um, deploying of staff. This is going back to incident management, the documentation. Um, this is, again, incident management, information management, having formal agreements. This is about laws and policies, et cetera. And then we ask, OK, so across all these different after action reports, and we've only got a collection of four, but there's nothing preventing. And I've done this actually with larger da data sets of like over 200 after action reports. And that's when it gets really interesting. But just focusing on animal disaster management, we said, well, what lessons keep coming up over and over? And again, without any other sort of bias, the AI comes back and says, role clarities, information management, et cetera, et cetera. It comes up. So AI is a tool that we can start to use in terms of saying, have we actually learned um, the lessons of the past. So if you're an agency, you may want to get all your after action reports, put them through Dante AI and say, look, what aren't we, what aren't we learning? What can we actually be focusing on? Um, if we're not sharing or doing after action reports, then they're not lessons, lessons learned, they're lessons denied, the lessons lost, buried, or lessons shredded even. Um, it's about making sure that if we are going to do uh, response that as an uh, accountable uh, uh, entity, um, that you're doing these reports. Um, and typically, you know, I've seen lots of organizations go out, respond, but there's no accountability. You know, it's like they want to go to the game on Saturday, uh, but they're not prepared to actually disclose really to their stakeholders, well, how much was spent, how many animals were actually sort of saved. Um, it's really important that we have a bit more transparency. So um, good practice um, for any agency is to do your own internal after action report that can feed into higher level reviews. But speaking of reviews, there was the National Disaster Resilience Strategy, which is uh, essentially the emergency management strategy for New Zealand. And that came out in 2019 for public submissions. The month prior to that, Animal Evac took a um, a major report with the assistance of Craig Fugate, the former director of FEMA, um, and Member of Parliament Gareth Hughes, and presented a comprehensive animal disaster law reform report to say, hey, here's some options to create world-class legislation around animal disaster management. Given the US had done something sort of similar in the past with the, the Pets Act um, post-Katrina. Um, and as a result, there was also a ministerial inquiry only two years prior to that. Uh, and in that process, um, lots of submissions were made. Um, in fact, 10% of the submissions made to the ministerial inquiry two years prior raised issue about the need to uh, include animals more so in animal disaster management law and policy. Um, those comments, those submissions were essentially relegated into an annex uh, and nothing really happened. Um, having worked in, in um, uh, the National Emergency Management Agency in its previous um, form, um, I know how generally interested people are not interested in making a submission on a civil defense or national disaster res resilience strategy. Um, when Animal Evac took this to the public and said, hey, there's a national disaster resilience strategy, everything starts with this, let's get animals specifically included there was historic levels of public submissions, um, but yet nothing changed. Um, and so coming back to the theme of this conference, it's about how do we have laws and policies that better protect animals, which actually protect communities in turn. So with that dilemma of, well, were we off the mark? Were we analyzing it wrong? This is where AI can help because there were lessons that were identified and submitted by the public to this, this process. So as a result of a freedom of information request, we managed to pull all the submissions 
and created a new knowledge base using Dante AI. And if you wanted to see uh, the, the information and campaign regarding that 2019 strategy, uh, visit that website link there. But let's see what Dante AI said. Interesting enough, what were the key concerns and recommendations from the submissions? Now, we're probably talking about 100 submissions, multiple pages each, lots and lots of pages for some, so a considerable amount of, of data. But number one at the top, in, incorporating animals explicitly in the strategy and considering their welfare. That was it. That was the number one thing that came through. The other concerns that were raised was ensuring there's genuine consultation and addressing the issues raised in the consultation process. Realizing animals and their role in their society and making sure that they are really well included in plans. So the concerns that were raised in this democratic process played out. Stakeholders and citizens continue to want animals in statutory documents. So why is the societal expectation not being realized? Or are these, are these more lessons lost or lessons denied? So AI can actually be used as a tool to actually substantiate um, you know, submissions, uh, feedback and opinions as we've done in this particular case. So taking away the, the animal centric or perceived animal centric perspective, we grab all those submissions, put them into, into Dante, and it comes out saying, guess what? Animals are an issue that New Zealanders want to see in law specifically and not relegated as an annex. So why aren't we learning? How can we take these lessons identified and actually make something more meaningful? Um, back in 2015, I created a, um, I published a non-AI-based lessons management tool in the Australian Journal of Emergency Management. Uh, but this year, with the, the rapid evolution of AI, I've modernised the model, and you as GADMAC delegates at GADMAC 2023 are the first to see the world's first AI-based lessons management model. Now, my criticism would be that there is generally an oversimplification of processes uh, with an emergency management. Imagine if we were to dumb down scientific processes for surgeons or engineers that were limited to a three or four element clip art image. The reality is that animals and disasters, especially when combined, are complex. We need to have sometimes more complex models to ensure that we can actually address these complex issues. Um, so down on the bottom right-hand corner, you can scan that code, and that will take you to the 2015 um, uh, article about the evidence-based dynamic doctrine, which has now been updated into a uh, real-time artificial intelligence-based doctrine, or RAID. And from there, you can sort of see that the idea is that during the event, we do all these documents, our after action reports, um, that leads into a, a central place where we can store all the after action reports. Um, a, a study I did um, some years ago, trying to identify all the after action reports in New Zealand from 1960 to 2010, I think off the top of my head, I think after a year of researching, that means personal collections, uh, archives visits, freedom of information requests, Googling, less than 25% of all those emergencies that were declared between 1960 and uh, 2010, less than 25% had any documentation available to say what went on and what was learned, which is pretty disappoint disappointing. So how can we plan how can, we go, how can we do things better if we're not prepared to actually document and actually learn from those previous disasters? And it wasn't uncommon that I spoke to an emergency manager in the area that a historic report was um, centered around to ring them up saying, hey, there was a flood in your area in 1987. And they'd go, I have no idea. I wasn't even here. Didn't even know there was a flood in 87. Let alone there was a report for it. 
So it's really important around our accountability because as we get better with lessons management, we reduce the amount of harm to society and the animals and the humans within it. So we've got a moral obligation to do better in terms of our lessons management. So moving on to there, you would see in the, probably the previous slide, um, uh, I'll just go back after that national uh, repository, um, there is a process which then puts all those documents into something like Dante AI. And there's a chatbot which means that as we go through response, recovery, preparedness, mitigation, recovery, whatever phase system you're using, or what we know as comprehensive emergency management, at each phase, we can go back to that AI knowledge base and just say, hey, this is what we're doing. What is the literature? What's the, what's the best practices? What's the information? Um, and it means that Dante is going to pull that information from a ring-fenced uh, Set, set of information which is specific and also been somewhat validated before um, it's used. So as a minor proof of concept, um, I've used the Dante AI because Dante AI, AI also allows you to have a widget which is sort of like this magical piece of witchcraft where it basically provides a search engine that you can put on your own website and that goes to that database. So people can't go to this particular um, widget um, and actually ask for the documents to be supplied, um, but that, um, that, uh, that chatbot can draw from that knowledge base that you've created. So at the moment, I've put all my research, all my publications um, into this chatbot. So now if I go into it, I'm just saying, according to uh, Steve Blassey, uh, basically, ask me a question about animal disaster management and it will draw upon um, my, my publications to, to give you a, a, um, an opinion. However, um, no, it's, it's probably prudent that uh, you know, such, such um, knowledge banks are not limited to, limited to one person's opinion. Um, so this is where there's some opportunities um, ahead. So what if? What if we all shared our documents to an AI knowledge base? So rather than just Googling and getting information which is actually not right, what if we had all those, all that research, we had all those guidelines, we had all those after action reports, we had all those inquiries, we had all those books that have been published sitting in one central neutral AI repository. And then we can start to ask it questions. We can start to do some better analysis. We can ask it to create model structures, frameworks, what are the patterns? But that's going to require people to contribute and allow their documents, their information to be shared. But what I also if we had a if we started to use the RAID process, the real-time artificially intelligent doctrine. And that means that in all phases of emergency management, including response, planning, et cetera, that we're actually using a repository which is enabled through AI to give us the best current information on how to do that particular phase. And if we did have a disaster response, imagine if we had the brains of Dave Pauly, Gerardo Hurtez, Leslie Irvine, Sebastian Heath, uh, Paula de Villa, had all those, all, all the, the publications and, and uh, ideas and thoughts and documents from those thought leaders in the AI. So when people ask a query or a question, we can actually answer it with solid evidence that has been verified. So that gives us a chance that as we go around the circle of lessons management, that every time there's a disaster, because we're correcting the incident action, the incident actions at the time, rather than realizing after the event, huh, yeah, we've made this mistake for the, for the last four incidents in a row and nothing's happened. We can try to correct that real time during the incident, because when we have a disaster, let's say there's a hazmat scenario, we can go to something like the Dante and say, 
we're dealing with a hazmat scenario in an urban area. Um, what are the top, um, what are the top 10 key things that are, need to be considered in the initial response? And then suddenly we get that information. Then we can go back and say, right, what were the top key lessons in hazardous materials response involving animals in the last 10 years? And we can get those. We can populate those into the recovery plan. We can populate those into the action plan rather than write another after action report to identify, hey, guess what? We forgot again for the fifth time that we, have, we had an issue that we could have resolved at the time. So as we go through this process, every disaster, the lessons management circle, the size of that circle should reduce. And that means that we're being more effective. It means we're being more accountable and we're saving more lives, both human and animals. So with Dante AI or other platforms, we've got opportunities to actually use AI for lessons management not just lessons management within animal disaster management, but in the wider mainstream area of disaster management, because we need to take an integrated one rescue, one health, one welfare approach. And that concludes my presentation. If you need any information, um, feel free to um, look me up on ResearchGate or LinkedIn, uh, emails there. Um, and if you are finding it difficult to sleep any night, um, on the bottom left-hand corner is a QR code to my PhD. It's got a number of recommendations in there and a number of um, publications which are open access. Um, but again, on behalf of Animal EVAC, we do encourage you to make a donation to keep this conference um, sustainable and free for everyone to view and present. So welcome to take um, any questions. And I believe we've actually got some questions there. Um, we do. Can you see those? We've got a we've got a lovely um, uh, reference put up by Paulo, which is fantastic. I don't know whether there's anything specific he wants me to cover a, about that, but um, obviously that's top dollar because it was written. He was one of the co-authors for that. Um, do you want to do you want to um, give me some questions, uh, Jen? Absolutely. So the first question is. As we know, emergency disaster man and man emergency and disaster management is an interdisciplinary field. Do you think that this knowledge base for Dante AI should include material outside animals, or do you think that it may be more valuable to remain topic specific? Uh, Lila, that's a really good question. And look, I'm still quite new to this whole AI thing, to be to be frank. Um, one thing that I'm, I, I think there's a limitation in particular with Dante. And look, others may know of better platforms to do this this kind of kind of work. Um, I thought it would be really cool if Dante actually had the ability to ask questions across multiple knowledge bases. So you could create a knowledge base just for animal disaster management, and then have one on mainstream emergency management or specific um, other areas, and then you could say. Here's a, here's a question, but I want you to draw answers from knowledge bases A and B and C, or A and E. Um, I don't think it does that, but I think um, what you're suggesting is, is very, very appropriate. I would say yes, include it, because again, we've got to be integrated in, in our approach. Um, I just think that um, most people know there's no money in, in anything associated with animals. Um, and so a lot of people do many things in this space out of goodwill. Um, and I think there may be less commercial interest or barriers for us to at least start off with a animal centric one. Um, and that may actually be an inspiration for mainstream emergency management to say, oh, good grief, the animal people have done this. They've managed to crack this chestnut. Um, why don't we get onto the bandwagon and then and um uh, you know, work with the coalition of the willing. So hopefully that helps, Lila. Wonderful. Our next uh, suggestion is, this is excellent, Steve, and I would go a step further. Have this as an international repository of response organizations, networking regional and national resources to further exchanges of not only information, but also potentially responders specializing in different types of rescues and responses. 
well anonymous attendee that is probably one of the the, the star questions of today and um i was glad to, to get a, a question like that because um that is something that actually uh gadmac uh is looking at um that we could be that custodian of a um as we are a global um organization to connect information and best practices to advance animal disaster management. So we do have a beta um, version uh, in Dante AI, um, which is the more full paid version. Um, so um, watch the space. It may be that we put out a, um, a call for champions and, and contributors uh, via the uh, MailChimp um, email list uh, in the coming weeks to say, Look, if you've if you've got great information, uh, if you've got publications you're happy to put into the to the um, to the Dante uh, to create such a such a platform, and then we can create that little chatbot that's specific to to GADMAC and that and that knowledge base or knowledge bases. Um, that'll be super exciting. Um, so thank you for that question. Wonderful, Teresa. Thanks to you for a very interesting new look at the future. And Kelly from the U.S. asks. Has emergency management as a whole started looking at or are using AI now for lessons observed? I love love to be lovely to hear from you, Kelly. Um, and um, I, I'm glad that you say lessons observed. Um, that's that's uh, shows that you understand the topic well. Look, in terms of emergency management, um, I think some of these tools are so new. I have not seen any. And that's not to say that that hasn't occurred. I think people are thinking about it. Um, but from what I've read, and uh, I do try to follow um, you know, uh, Google Scholar alerts around AI and lessons management, I haven't seen anything sort of published. So to, to my knowledge, um, this lessons management tool, the RAID system that I've developed, is more than just lessons management because it's also about integrating the lessons management real time into all phases of emergency management, as opposed to just being that sort of phase in the sort of post response area um, in terms of trying to get some after action reports. And um, I would hope that people are looking at AI. Um, and it was a bit triggered because when I did this um, search for after action reports, and when I say after action reports, it could be just minutes of council meetings to a post it note. Um, that was supplied in terms of trying to get after action reports from 1960 to 2010. Um, I had literally, you know, about 180 PDF documents that I collected years and years ago. And I just thought one day when I'm extremely bored, I'll have the time to go through and do a thematic analysis. I never had the time. And this Dante came along and I thought, oh my goodness, I've got all this data sitting here and this system could go through and have a look. I wonder if it could, and what would the quality be? Um, and lo and behold, when I ran it through and it crunched the numbers and it, it uh, thought for a little while, it came out and it sort of blew my mind. Um, so in terms of a, um, a beta version of using AI, um, yep, that's great. I think there's, there's, um, it's, there's some proof there to say it can happen. Um, now, you may be in a better position or one of our other attendees may be in a better position to answer this question, but um, I know that the US at one stage had um, the Lessons Learned Information Sharing System, I think LLIS. Um, I believe that was discontinued, but I'm happy to be corrected if someone's got a link or, or a further update. Um, but we can't do this AI unless we have the pre prerequisite, if I even just sort of go back a few sort of slides, we've got to have this requirement um, that people actually do um, after action reports, because unless we have them being done, um, we've got nothing to AI. Um, the trouble is, is that often, and especially in animal disaster management, how often do we actually share our after action reports? Where are they? We got all these millions of dollars going into response that are, uh, you know, from from donations, et cetera, et cetera. Where's the accountability? Where's the transparency? Um, so one, we've got to actually, as a as a community, need to be a bit more accountable and transparent about. Okay, we responded. We used public funds or donations. We need to do an after action report. 
those after action reports have to be shared because if they're not shared, the lesson's denied. If they have been then stored, and hopefully we've got sort of some sort of format to, to encourage some consistency, but that's going to be difficult in itself, then we can have something like an AI tool. So in some ways, we've got to, we've got to go back a few steps and say, right, everyone, are we actually committing to a protocol where actually we do after action reports, we do share those, we do store them somewhere so that we can do the analysis? Otherwise, we're going to have a data set that is just going to be looking at potentially just the best practice organizations and not the organizations that probably need to learn more. Hopefully that's um, helped, um, Kelly. Wonderful. Thank you. Do we have any more questions for Steve before we let him go? I'm not seeing any in the Q&A. Dr. Glassy, thank you so much for a mind-blowing presentation. Definitely much to think about in terms of resources and gathering, as you said, the many years of experience from speakers we've heard from already and from those yet to come. Well, thank you for hosting and all your work that you are doing, Jenny. I really appreciate it. Thank you.